Okay, we are in episode 28 on page 83. Then Beowulf's Wolf and his men wa went walking along the shore, down the broad strip of sand. The world's bright candle shone, hurrying up from the south. It was a short journey from their ship to Higlak's home, to the hall where the king, Ungentho's killer, lived with his warriors and gave treasures away. They walked quickly. The young king knew they were back. Beowulf and his handful of brave men come safely home. He sat now, waiting to see them, to greet his battle comrades when they arrived at his court. They came. And when Beowulf had bowed to his lord and standing in front of the throne had solemnly spoken loyal words, Higlak ordered him to sit at his side. He, who had survived, sailed home victorious, next to his kinsmen and his king. Mead cups were filled, and Herod's daughter took them through the hall, carried ale to her husband's comrades. Higlak, unable to stay silent, anxious to know how Beowulf's adventure had gone, began to question him, courteous but eager to be told everything. Beloved Beowulf, tell us what your trip to far-off places brought you, your sudden expedition on the salty waves, your search for war in Herod. Did you end Hrothgar's hopeless misery? Could you help that glorious king? Grendel's savagery lay heavy on my heart, but I was afraid to let you go to him. For a long time I held you here, kept you safe, forced you to make the Danes fight their own battles. God be praised that my eyes have beheld you once more, unharmed. So Beowulf and the Geats walk to Higlak and his meat hall. Um, there's a celebration, and um, the woman is completing the ceremonial pouring of the mead. Higlak wants to hear about all of Beowulf's adventures, because what Beowulf does inadvertently um, is representative of what Higlak is as well. Um, he, though, admits that he knew that Hrothgar um, was in a lot of trouble much earlier than Beowulf found out, and he didn't say anything to Beowulf because he was worried that if Beowulf did go, he would be hurt. He was trying, he was being a little selfish. He admits to being selfish and kind of keeping Beowulf with him. Beowulf son, spoke, edged those brave son. My lord Higlak, my meeting with Grendel in the nighttime battle we fought are known to everyone in Denmark, where the monster was once that uncrowned ruler murdering and eating Hrothgar's people, forever bringing them misery. I ended his reign, avenged his crime so completely that in the crashing darkness that not even the oldest of the evil kind will ever boast, lying in sin and deceit, that that monster beat me. I sought out Hrothgar first, came to him in his hall. When Helfdane's famous son heard that I'd come to challenge Grendel, he gave me a seat of honor alongside his son. His followers were drinking. I joined their feast, sat with that band, as bright and t loud tongued as ever I'd, any I'd seen. His famous queen went back and forth, hurrying the cup-bearing boys, giving bracelets and rings to her husband's warriors. I heard the oldest soldiers of all calling for ale from Hrothgar's daughter's hands, and Freya was the way they greeted her when she gave them the golden cup cups. And Hrothgar will give her to Ingold, gracious Frodo's son, Frodo's son. She and that ripe, ripening soldier will be married, the Dane's great lord and protector has declared, hoping that his quarrel with the Hathelbards can be settled by a woman. He's wrong. How many wars have been put to rest in a prince's bed? Few. A bride can bring a little peace, make Spear silent for a time, but not long. Ingold and all his men will be drinking in the hall when the wedding is done, and Freyau in his, is his wife. The Danes will be wearing gleaming armor and ring-marked old swords, and the prince and his people remember those treasures, will remember that their fathers once wore them, fell with those helmets on their heads, those swords in their hands. So we um, end this episode um, in an interesting manner. Beowulf is recapping his um, adventures uh, in Geatland. And then he starts to talk about um, Freya, who is uh, a Danish princess, and that she has been betrothed or married off to Ingold, who's a Hathabard. And the purpose is, is that uh, Hrothgar is hoping that if he can just give her his daughter to the Hathabards, um, that will kind of pay off uh, this uh, impending battle that's going to ensue. Beowulf doesn't think that this is a good idea. He doesn't think that you can buy victory or safety with a woman. He says, you know, pretty soon after the wedding, there's going to be people looking around and they're going to realize what's really happened and that um, it's really setting them up for failure. So we have an interesting kind of explanation or purpose to the warrior culture um, that is established. Again, Beowulf being smart, being a good leader, doesn't think that this is the best thing for them to do.